One of the perceived holy grails for delivering the right therapy to the right patient is to use biomarkers. Um, as with any immunotherapy, we have looked at pdl one expression to guide us to maybe say, okay, these are patients who should get therapy, whereas who shouldn't. Unfortunately, this had not worked out well in renal cell carcinoma. So if you are pdl one positive, that's roughly 25% of patients, we do see an enrichment in the responders, as well as patients who get a complete response, can be up to 16% in the combination of nivolumab and ipilimumab. But if you're pdl one negative, you still have a response rate of 37%, still have a CR rate of 7%. So really not good enough to say, okay, you're PDL1 negative, you shouldn't get this kind of therapy. Um, you know, um, today Dr. Um, Rini um, presented uh, follow-up data on a phase three trial that uh, looked at the combination of atezolizumab with bevacizumab uh, and looked at biomarkers uh, primarily by gene expression. Um, and um, a previous trial had indicated there was a, a signature uh, that could predict for angiogenesis high-low, uh, so predicting for the response to angiogenesis inhibitors, as well as uh, essentially a T-cell uh, signature. Um, interestingly, the signatures were able to be reproduced in a large phase three trial, so I think that's quite encouraging. Um, it um, also interestingly highlighted again that maybe good risk patients uh, may have a higher preponderance to be in the angiogenesis high group, uh, so maybe these are tumors that are less inflamed and maybe more amenable um, to angiogenesis inhibition than immunotherapy. So um, it's a, it, these are all very interesting data sets. Uh, not good enough by themselves to really direct care, but I think uh, good enough um, to work with and maybe build on further strategies.